Okay, greetings, friends. Today I would like to talk about Moby Dick. Specifically, I would like to talk about the <clears throat> quote unquote annoying chapters, some of the chapters that uh, really turn people off to the book, uh, but which are actually instrumental in um, getting out of Moby Dick what you can get out of Moby Dick. Uh, before going on, though, I would appreciate if you could give this video a like, maybe even subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Every like and subscription helps a great deal as I grow this channel. But okay, Moby Dick, specifically the annoying chapters, um, of which I would include chapters 32, 74, and 75, which are titled uh, Cytology, the Sperm Whale's Head, and the Right Whale's Head. Um, I'm assuming anybody who listens to this is familiar with Moby Dick. Um, I, maybe you're a fan or maybe you're being forced to read it for a class. And um, yeah, Moby Dick has been, it's gotten kind of a bad rap lately. Um, I don't think people appreciate it, which kind of makes sense given the context of our modern era. But I think it's really, uh, I, th I legitimately think it's sad. I think there's a lot that can be gained from reading Moby Dick, but only for a certain kind of person, which is the first thing I want to get into. And to discuss that, um, to understand why I would want to spend my time talking about Moby Dick and why I think, why I've spent my time reading Moby Dick multiple times and why I think you potentially could benefit from reading Moby Dick. I first have to understand um, that the book is not, it's not really about entertain, entertainment, although the book is very entertaining in my opinion. I think the book at times is straight up hilarious. <sighs> But, um, sorry, I'm checking my microphone here. It's acting kind of strange. I think we're good to go. Anyway, so to get into that, um, I'm, for, I'm going to quote from Samuel Coleridge, borrowing the quote from this book, which is uh, by Merlin Bowen, Professor Merlin Bowen, who has since passed away. Um, it's The Long Encounter, the writings of Herman Melville. I think it is the single greatest book of uh, literary criticism I've ever read. I've actually read this book um, as a, uh, the book is worth reading in itself um, beyond reading it as a um, lens into the writings of Melville. The book itself can teach you a lot. It's a, it's a great book. I would have loved to have taken a class by uh, Professor Merlin Bowen. If there was anybody I could have studied literature with, it would have been Professor Merlin Bowen. But Professor Bowen, starts out his book by quoting Coleridge. And he says, there have been men in all ages, Coleridge once remarked, who have been impelled as by an instinct to propose their own nature as a problem and who devote their attempts to its solution. Now, I think if you fit into that category of person as I do, and we're a very small tribe, a very small tribe of individuals that seem to pop up completely at random. It's not hereditary or anything. There's just some of us who are born questioning, wondering about life and about ourselves and um, about the meaning of it all, about the meaning of ourselves. And for those of us who are in that tribe, that tiny tribe, I think Moby Dick is immensely worth reading. Um, I put it up there with one of the most worthwhile reads ever penned. Um, but okay, so specifically the chapters I want to discuss are 32, 74, and 75. There are other chapters included in this um, category of chapters that just don't seem to make any sense. When people read Moby Dick, they get frustrated because, you know, they ask, why was this thrown in here? It feels like pointless filler. I think 32 cytology probably um, illustrates that the best. Um, if you if you recall, the entire in the entirety of chapter 32 is um, it's it's basically just uh, writing about the scientific aspects of whales and um, all their various members of their family, and um, it's beyond dry. I mean, it's not even written like fiction. I mean, it's literally written like a 
I want to say a science textbook because it's not that technical, but like a like a naturalist piece, you know. And in itself, that chapter, as well as the sperm whale's head and the right whale's head chapters, um, they do seem annoying, but you have to understand them within the broader context of the book. Because, as I said, referring to that Coleridge quote, Moby Dick is about, it's about finding truth with a capital T. That differs slightly depending on the person you're talking to. Um, like I've heard many people say that Moby Dick was about searching for God. And I think that's true for some people. But um, theists aren't the only people that are searching for meaning and they're not the only people trying to understand themselves. Um, and when I say understand themselves, I mean understand themselves on a deep level, maybe on a level that's irrational and one that we can't ever understand. And so that those of us in that tribe, we may be cursed by this, right? Like that's possible. We could be cursed because this could be, um, it could ultimately be an irrational quest, irrational, hopeless, something that we're doomed to just keep questioning and just keep looking and looking and driving ourselves crazy, looking for the answers. But so within the context of the book, both Ahab is obsessed with this quest, but Ishmael is also on this quest. Um, I think it could even be said that maybe he is in danger of becoming Ahab, possibly. But, okay, so these chapters, the reason why they matter, the reason um, when Ishmael deviates from the main narrative and um, he's either just uh, babbling about cetology or the shape of whales' heads, what it is is Ishmael trying to understand himself and trying to understand reality in a purely rational and scientific sense, right? The, the whale, Moby Dick, represents the self, God, the universe, that thing that certain people search for. And I think all people probably search for it at some points in their lives. But there are some of us that are just kind of obsessed. If you're still listening to this, you're probably one of those people who's spent your life obsessed with these questions. And so the reason why these chapters matter in the broader context of the book is because it's Ishmael looking at the whale, which represents this quest, this thing that he's trying to understand, reality. And he's looking at it in a coldly scientific, um, rationalistic way. And the thing is, his musings, they may they may be correct. Um, I, I mean, I think cytology was correct to the science of the era, maybe still is. I don't know how much the science of whales has changed, the, like the zoological knowledge of whales. But, um, but that's not the point, because the point, of, the point of it is that it's completely unfulfilling, right? Like, he can describe the whales in these physical dimensions, in these scientific dimensions. And he may be accurate about, he is accurate about that, but who cares, right? I mean, those chapters, the brilliance of them is that you read them and you're, you're like, this is so stupid. What is the point of this? Um, this is so boring, but that's the whole point. And that's why it's brilliant because it's Melville pointing to the fact that whatever this yearning is that we have, that I think all human beings have to some degree, but some of us have very strongly, whatever this thing is, it, it can't be satiated through um, purely scientific understanding. We're looking for something more, which is why I said maybe it's irrational. Who knows? I guess it really all depends on what we find which maybe boils down to the old question of, is, is there a God or isn't there a God? I really don't know. I just know that the brilliance of these chapters is that it's kind of like the ultimate case of showing versus telling in a way, even though slightly different from how writers usually use those terms. But rather than having Ishmael come out and explain that scientific understanding and um, purely physical understanding, materialist understanding, maybe scientific is the wrong word to work. It's 
a purely materialistic study of something is not what we're looking for. Even if we can achieve it, even if we can hammer out the, the material description of the thing, the scientific description of the thing, even if we achieve that, it's not what we're looking for. And it feels completely empty. But instead of having Ishmael tell you that, he shows you that by actually writing whole chapters. And so that you read the chapters and what happens? Most people find it incredibly dull and boring and they don't understand why it's even in the book. And that's why I think it's absolutely brilliant. And that's why I think the book is brilliant. The book is not about the quest for truth. The book itself is the quest for truth. Just a fly, little, little fruit fly. But um, that's why the book is so brilliant, including and maybe especially the boring chapters. Because it's him um, not forcing you, um, inviting you to look at how hollow that actually feels and how it cannot fulfill what that thing is. And yeah, it's not really a happy thing, right? I mean, because those of us who are searching for the answer, we really want the answer, you know, we really want to know. Who am I in the deepest, most profound sense? What is life about in the deepest, most profound sense, right? The idea that there is no answer to any of those things or that the answer is nothing. There is nothing deep and profound in me. There's nothing deep and profound in life for the meaning of life. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's not an answer that any of us want, those of us who are kind of doomed or cursed or maybe blessed to be on this path of trying to understand. Um, yeah. And so, but, and now I'm deviating because there is, um, I do believe actually that Melville gives an answer to some of these questions in Moby Dick, but that's for a different topic or a different uh, discussion right now. I just wanted to discuss these annoying chapters. Um, why I think they're, misunderstood and why I think they're actually brilliant. And yeah, that's about it. Moby Dick is a great book. If you're here and uh, your interest is peaked at all, or if you're trying to read the book and wondering what was so great about it, I, uh, I, I encourage you to just keep going and read books about the book. It's one of those books that does benefit from reading books about the book. Uh, I love Moby Dick incredible novel. And uh, I appreciated this chance to talk to you a little bit about it. All right. Thanks, friends. Later.